Hello and welcome to the second tutorial on using the Steamcast server. In the first tutorial we talked a little bit about installation and how to relay uh, an existing stream. In this one we're going to talk about an actual source encoder connecting to Steamcast. Now the difference between a relay and source encoder is really which direction we're transmitting. So in the event of a relay, we actually are pulling the data from an existing source like another Steamcast server, an Icecast 2 server, or Shoutcast server. In, <clears throat> in source uh, configuration, we're actually going to push the signal to the server. So in many instances, what that would mean is that that server would be sort of the origin server for the entire broadcast, so all other relaying would relay from it. In order to set up our source tool, the first thing we have to do is set up a mount configuration inside Steamcast. So let's add a new mount. I'm going to call it Live, but you can name it anything you like. Click Create. Once this is created, we're going to click on this mount and we're going to choose users. So as you can see there's no users currently configured for this particular mount. And what this means is that there's not really any way for somebody to broadcast to this mount except if they use the administrator account or an administrator's uh, credentials. Obviously this would be a bad thing if we were wanting to allow guest DJs to run through our server or if we were wanting to allow different radio stations to have access to our single server. So in order to give them their own access we have to create an account. So I'm going to give them a username. It doesn't matter what their username is. What does matter is that it's unique on this server. So. Once you've created a username, say my DJ name, you can only create it once. You can't have different uh, accounts with the same username and different passwords. That would be weird. So for uh, our password, I'm going to type Frank. Uh, obviously, you might want to use something a little bit more difficult to guess, but this is just a demonstration. Uh, for our group, this is very important. So we have some options here. Mount Manager and Mount Source. Those are the two main options that allow us to broadcast to the single mount. The difference between these two is that a mount source is only able to broadcast to this mount. They're not able to log into the panel or see any statistical details or access the listeners or kick, ban, anything like that. All they can do is send a signal to the server. This is great for guest DJs. But let's say that we know that we want to be able to log in and change things. So let's say we got a trusted friend or a trusted manager who can log in and access this resource and can do things like manage the listeners and see statistics. So we're going to choose the mount manager option. Once this is done, we click create and we get bounced back to the user list. You can create many different mount managers and many different source uh, um, managers, I mean, I'm sorry, mount sources in this list. So that way you could have several different accounts that access the same resource. And, you know, if for whatever reason things go south with a DJ, you just delete their account. No big deal. Nobody else has to be bothered by it. Once this is done, we'll go ahead and open up our source encoder. Now in this example, I'm using the tool called But. You don't need to use a tool like this. You can use any Shoutcast, to, uh, Shoutcast or Icecast 2 capable source tool. Uh, examples include SAM Broadcaster, SAMcast, um, Shoutcast DSP, uh, source ISS, Easy Streamer, um, Edcast, any of those would work. And um, there are slight like differences in the way you configure things on whether or not you're using Shoutcast or Icecast. And I'll go through those in a minute. 
So let's go to settings, and the very first thing that's going to ask us is what audio device uh, we're going to pull from. Obviously, I'm okay with just this default device, and we need to add a server. So I'm going to click the Add button. I'm going to give it the name Steamcast. Now, if you have no other option, you have to use Shoutcast, then there's a slightly different way that you have to set things up. We prefer IceCast source styles because that allows you to pass the username and password and the mount point. But if you don't have that option with your tool, if you have to use Shoutcast, then the only way to do that is to set it up this way, which is we type in our address, our port is 8000, and then I'm going to show password so you can see what I'm typing. I'm going to type my DJ name colon uh, Frank. So that's like the big difference. If you're used to streaming to a Shotcast version one, you would have th you would think that all we'd, you'd have to do is pass Frank, but in the situation where you're working with Steamcast, you need to pass the username so that we know who this person is. Um, once that's done, we can click Add and then broadcast as we normally would. Uh, under Icecast, a little bit different. Uh, obviously, we can just use Frank for the password and my DJ name as the user. And then for the mount point, we want to use that mount that we listed on our stats page which was live so we type in live and once that's all set up we click add the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna set up our stream info page so we'll click add on the stream info and we'll type um, my radio for description I'm gonna type um, streaming to the world so exciting I'll just put talk because that's all I'm doing here and we'll type in any URL you want this can be your own personal fan page this can be your own radio station page or anything you like I'll just do steamcast.com because hey I'm a fan and making our server public that just means that we'll list it on uh, whatever directories you have configured in Steamcast, which comes to default with Icecast and the Steamcast directory. So we'll just go ahead and say yeah. And we'll click Add. And we'll save the settings. And now we just click this Play button. So now it's broadcasting to our Steamcast server. If I refresh, You'll see that all the details are in here that should be in here. <clears throat> we'll be able to see who's, uh, what's play, but obviously you can't see that. And there's our username. So, yeah. So now we're broadcasting. So when I go to the admin page, I'll be able to tune in and maybe hear my voice. I don't know. I can't hear anything. So, But you would be able to hear whatever you're broadcasting, obviously. Uh, and then when you go to the listeners page, you'll see that that's the listener. You'll see the listener is tuned in. Now, when somebody's just logged in as the DJ mount administrator or mount manager, I'm sorry, uh, they will just be able to see these options. So they'll be able to see the stats page and the listeners that are only on that specific mount as well as configure the broadcast for just that mount. You have the option of setting up mount defaults, which basically carry over to all other mounts on the entire server. Some of those settings can be overridden. So even if you put, like, say, an average bitrate limit here, you know, of 450. Uh, for uh, 140, uh, obviously, it, you know, once I hit done, that just it just means that that defaults to this value. If I want to actually rate limit in a server, I'm going to have to actually set it at that particular mount. So, anyways, uh, and obviously, there's our global configuration, but we'll go into more detail on that later. 
as an administrator, you can check out all the users that are associated with this particular server by going to add manage using users and in here we can actually go into the my DJ name that we just created and right now if you click on access you'll see that they only have access to live that's what this little one basically is signifying um, we can edit that access by clicking on the edit button and in here we can actually set targets and things like that but that's a much more advanced feature uh, bands again these are all global um, and each mount can also have its own bands and own reserves so yeah I feel like the user management will definitely be able to cover more of that in the future uh, but this should be enough to get you going and get you broadcasting with just your your favorite encoder, whatever that may be. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and uh, we'll see you next time.